Hello creative friends, this is Joy. So I decided I wanted to make myself a small little junk journal that I can use to just do quick little um, art artsy things in um, every day so I could try to do more of a daily practice with my art. So I took this piece of canvas and I cut it down <clears throat> to about the size I thought the cover might be. And then you can see here I'm just scraping white gesso over the canvas with um, a card. And this is just, um, it was actually a canvas drop cloth that I bought and I've been cutting it up. It's a lot cheaper than buying canvas on the roll from, you know, the art supply stores. <clears throat> and it works the same. It's just raw canvas and you gesso it and, you know and it, the gesso helps to stiffen it up a bit. So after I gessoed the one side, I set it aside and I was wanting to add some pages to this journal in canvas. And so I have these other pieces that I decided to cut to add to this um, journal. And I was gonna gesso them as well, but decided against it. I thought, you know what, no, I want the raw canvas in the journal so I'm measuring the size of the cover to make sure that I cut these pieces down to fit inside the cover and I thought it would be best if I made myself a template of what the um, inside pages the size of the inside pages should be so that's what I'm doing with this piece of copy paper and checking to say see you know what size it would possibly be and decided that I wanted the pages just a little bit smaller. Otherwise, other, now that I think back, I probably should have left it, you know, that little bit on there because once I put it together, I didn't think about it taking up space, you know, for the way it was binded and makes the pages even smaller. But in any case, um, that's what I um, decided to do. Um, with this size um, so and I basically made the pages a half inch smaller um, in height and in width than what the cover was but because I cut off like another inch then the um, the width of the pages was actually more like an inch and a half and you'll see at the end that my cover is bigger than it needs to be and so I end up having to cut off um, about an inch from my cover so here I just quickly you know cut the size that I needed and then I have these other two this other piece of canvas so I just line it up and cut that as well so these are going to actually be what I use to decide what the size of my other pages are. So I go through my scrap box and I pull out um, whatever papers I had. I had a lot of uh, jelly printed papers in here that um, I had done a while ago. And I had, these are um, deli papers where I was rolling off the color onto the deli paper. And I thought, well, I'll put those in there. Those will work. And um, like I said, the jelly print other jelly printed papers I printed it on um, sheet mu music paper on um, on just regular um, what am I trying to say uh, book cover papers and on pattern paper and on just regular like cardstock so I take these um, different jelly prints and um, like I said as uh, I'm using the canvas pages that I created as a template I'm pretty much cutting the rest down to size and I realize that it's probably easier to use my ruler to tear these than not so that's why I am pulled out the ruler and I'm using that and they they don't have to be the exact you know size um, just close and some of them are smaller some of them well I made sure none of them were bigger I made sure they all stayed within the same size and then ones like this I tore off any excess border and then you know tore it in half so that um, I can get it down to the size I needed and so again here's one that I just want to tear
tear off a little bit of the border and then rip it in half. So I make as, you know, go through all of these and just stack these up to um, as many pages as I can get. I don't even know how many pages there are. I didn't even really count. I just, like I said, kind of went through and just took everything I had and cut it down or not like the book pages and the music um, sheet music pages that I jelly printed on I didn't have to to cut down because they were already a good size but everything else I made sure that um, I cut it down to, to the size that uh, it was needed so I have a couple of those um, there um, were tea bags and I was going to use these pictures but I ended up deciding not to use them um, the paper that it's on is really brittle and I don't know I just decided you know what I'll use those and some other projects some other time but I just didn't feel like that you know this was the project to use those in so I put those aside and then I had this bag that I'm like well if I rip it in half that'd be the right size and I could fold it and it'd be like little pockets but the one side is good the other side I had to close up the bottom so I just used some masking tape on that I mean you know eventually these are going to be decorated and painted and whatever so that'll work and then I decided I wanted some more book pages just blank ones so I pulled out this book it's, it was a book um, on card games and then I had this coffee news that I found in my stash because I also have another box under my desk with a bunch of other scrap paper. So that's what I was digging into, the, um, the box underneath my desk. And then I found this piece of paper that just had stuff on it from um, other projects. And another book that I was tearing pages out of and I wanted some more music note pages so I grabbed some more of those threw those on the pile and so I pretty much decided I had a pretty good sized pile so then I kind of started making these four piles to mix up the pages for this journal so I'm just kind of going over and trying to mix and match um, all these pages because you know I want them to be um, to not you know I want them to be the blank pages kind of mixed with the printed pages um, the jelly printed pages and that kind of thing and so that's what I'm doing here just making these four piles of uh, papers and I thought I was short a um, page but you can see there on the bottom left there was actually two pages there I didn't notice so then I put in um, these are the coffee news pages and some more jelly prints and then some more um, music note pages and then at the end I put um, the bags and then the um, coffee or the uh, tea bags these are from extra large tea bags that I decide to go should go in the middle so now I have I put two of those together so now I have two signatures so I put instead of uh, you know the four um, I stacked them on two of them on top and have the two different signatures <clears throat> I probably should just stuck with the four I don't know why I decided to do two but I decided to do two I probably would have been better off now I think about it to have done four um, but that's okay uh, I this is what I did anyway if I had done it differently I, I probably would have done um, just done four different signatures because it ended up being a lot to try to bind you know I mean I don't know how many pages is there but there's a lot of pages there so I clip them together so that's one signature and then what I'm doing is I'm trying to kind of make them somewhat even like where they're sitting centered so that I don't have any wonky pages or any that are you know, really kind of off um, so yeah I'm trying to stack these together so that they are um, somewhat you know even on top of each other 
uh, you know, even though they're not all the same size, I want to get them as close as I can. So then that's the second stack, and so I um, put clips on that to hold that together. But as I'm clipping it, I noticed that it kind of like shifted. So then I had to, you know, fix that. You can see where one side kind of got wonky and so I'm trying to fix it. So, cause I want to, you know, keep them somewhat even together. <clears throat> so when I sew them, they're not, sew them into the book, they're not too, they're not all crooked. So I have those two signatures now and I, end up bringing back the cover and decide to gesso the other side of the cover because by this time the gesso was dry on the one side and so I scraped gesso on the other side of the cover so that I can get that um, done and you know let that dry <clears throat> and I don't remember how long it took to dry and I don't I don't remember how long it took me to Put those pages together but it took me a little while um, so I mean it dries fairly fast um, I would say at least a half hour so then here I um, took out my acrylic paint and I decided to do the inside of the cover with some different uh, colors of turquoise I figured I'd just kind of do a, a muted you know um, inside and I was had to add a little bit of water to this paint to get it to spread because it was it wasn't spreading and I didn't want to use a whole ton of paint, you know, to cover this and I wanted to keep it light. Um, so that's you know why well, I'm adding water to it to um, make thin it out and to help it spread so I can get it over the page and then once that's dry I take some stencils and I take a little bit darker color turquoise and a little sponge dauber and I decided to add you know some of the some pattern to this um, to this cover or the in, this is going to be the inside and actually as I'm doing this I'm like well I might end up really liking this and decide to may decide to make this the outside <laughs> but I do end up leaving you know this as the inside cover I do decide the outside um, instead of being more muted I wanted it more colorful so then I get a little bit darker blue and a different pattern and I add that onto the inside with this um, dauber and then um, I get a little bit darker blue and a different pattern and decide to add you know um, more and this is the darkest I wanted to go uh, so I decided that with this um, actually no I do two more patterns I do this pattern no I do okay I remember now yeah this is uh, I end up deciding this is the darkest I wanted to go so I use this pattern to cover all of the rest of the areas that didn't get covered before and then there was a couple little spots that I used it on just to kind of finish covering because I was like I don't really want to go darker than this um, this is pretty dark but then what I did was when I was drying I was kind of dabbing at some areas that were really wet and it was pulling up some of the paint and I liked that it kind of like lightened it and distressed it a little bit so I was doing that um, dabbing it with um, with the uh, paper towel to get some of that up so on the outside of the cover I decided I wanted to kind of start off the same but this is one of the instead of such a light turquoise I went with like a medium uh, shade of turquoise and water and covering the outside of the book or the cover here that I'm going to use and so I just quickly do that and then um, I decided to blot it with paper towel and give it a little bit more of a stressed, distressed look. So I did that and I dried it. And then I took um, some different stencils and some different colors because I wanted the outside to be colorful. So I got this stencil and I 
decided to use a light purple, but it was really way too light, lighter than I wanted. I really didn't, you know, it wasn't working for me. So then I got a darker purple and tried that, and that seemed to work better. And you will see as I'm doing this cover, it's like the inside went so well, and then the outside I kept goofing up, and I was frustrated with myself which you will see that. So anyway, I add the purple and I guess it was me being impatient. I just wanted to get it done and um, yeah, it got goofed up. So um, I add the purple and then I decided to blot it a little bit. Well, on that one, it blotted up too much and then you couldn't tell it was a flower anymore. It just looked like a big blob, blob or whatever. So now I'm trying to fix that because I wasn't happy that, it, you know, <clears throat> it kind of left a blob. And so I re-stenciled that on there and then I dried that. And then I wanted to add some green with um, this honeycomb. But I didn't want too much of the green because I thought that's going to not look good if I got too much with these colors that I've already got on here. And, you know, it's going to might clash too much so I just did a little bit I don't want to do too much of that so I tried to dry that really good and then I had these hearts um, this Tim Holtz um, heart stencil and decided I wanted to add some of those in red and I really like using these doppers because I could you know like get just enough on there you know to stencil it except for that first one I got too much and it blobbed so I had to make sure I didn't get so much on there and then it worked better um, a lot better and plus it's thinner and it dries more quickly so I put some of those on there and um, decided um, I like that so then I dried that and then I have these circles um, I didn't dry it I dried it enough. This one I, I didn't smudge yet. <laughs> You'll see her in a minute. So then I decided to take the blue um, and then put it in, fill up the rest with the, the blue or the circles. So I did that all over for the rest of it. I thought, okay, that's enough colors. You know, I don't want to get too carried away. <laughs> so I did that. So now I'm like, okay, we need black. And I really like this stencil with um, words and stuff on it um, I don't know exactly what it says but anyway so we need to do some black but since the um, openings are so small it works best with a stencil brush so I grabbed a stencil brush and I'm stenciling um, this um, on here and it's turning out pretty good I'm really happy with it and then I'm like, wow, this is looking really good. I really like this. This is really great. And then I goof it up. So I'll show you here. You'll see here in a minute where I goof it up. So here, when I go over top, I goof it up because I get black and red on there and then smear it right there. Oh, gosh. I saw the black. I didn't see the red. So now I'm trying to take a baby wipe and clean it up. And luckily, since this is gessoed, it wipes everything off uh, for the most part. Um, so I got off as much as black as I could. And like I said, I didn't even notice the red because I was so focused on the black. And I took the purple and tried to cover that up somewhat. And then I got the red and kind of fix the hearts and then um, I dried that and then stenciled over that with some black so I mean in the end I, it's okay I mean I don't know it's fine um, and that big red blob I just I left it when I by the time I realized I'm like you know what I'm not gonna stress over it it is what it is it looks like a plain paint splat and that's fine with me maybe I should have just went with paint splats on this cover I don't know so yeah there's where I noticed the red and it's already almost dried so I'm like yeah I'll still stencil over it nobody will know any different there we go good enough <laughs> 
So that's what I did. That's the cover. And so now I got my signatures and I fold them in half and I'm trying to crease them. Again, I should have went with four instead of two big ones. It would have been a lot better and uh, I, I don't know better, but different. It might not have been, you know, been easier, I guess. And so I got this piece of foam. I got it out of some kind of packaging and it's great for when I'm trying to poke holes um, into things. So, okay, I'm trying to figure out where I want my holes. And I believe I go in like an inch and a half on both sides um, and put two holes. And then I use my awl and I poke through and add my holes. And I do that on both signatures. So I just poke through and make sure I make, get the holes nice and big because when I go to sew it, I don't want to have any problems getting through all those pages. So I'm just um, doing the other one the same. So I'm just poking through and uh, getting the holes, you know, as big as I can with the awl. And once I do that, I bring my cover in, and now i got to figure out where to put the holes in the cover. So I crease it in half so I can get a, an idea of the center. And I try to put that center in between both signatures and put the signatures in there to try to make sure I got it in the middle and then I got it, them straight. And then I mark with a pencil where the center of those signatures are so I can get an idea. I mean, I could have measured. I This to me was easy enough. But then when I did that, I'm like, hmm, something's a little off. I could tell. So then I had to measure. I'm like, okay, I need to make sure that they're the same. And they were just a little off. But anyway, so I just fixed that. And then I started trying to figure out, let's see, where do I need to put the holes? in this and I decide you know what there's an easier way it this doesn't need to be perfect and I was my brain was like not I was like this is like harder trying to figure it out than just to lay this on here and mark it there you go mark holes got it lay the other one on here where it lined up to where I had those marks where it should go and just mark the holes and punched easy peasy there you go got the holes in there <laughs> that's one thing about you know this I'm like I don't want it to be too complicated so then I got this uh, baker's twine I guess it's called and decided to use the red and the black and then I make it a little bit longer than four times the length of the holes so I measure the holes and then do that four times and then add a little bit extra for tying so I get a needle with a big eye on the needle and I sew the signatures into um, the cover. So I get it through, it takes me a little bit to get it, get it through and then I tie that off really tight and actually when I first tied it the first time it was not tight at all, it was way too loose. So I had to untie it and tie it again it needs to you know be as tight as you can get it and so I had to tie it even tighter so I got that tied and one thing I didn't do which I probably will go back and do is I always like to add a little bit of uh, Aileen's tacky glue to the knot just so it doesn't start unraveling but I did you know tie it a couple more times but I do need I do want to do that I do want to add a little bit of glue to those knots just so that they don't come undone. And then I do the second signature. And I made sure when I was putting these in that the paper bags that I put in here for pockets was the right way. Because I'm like, I don't want to put this in here, sew these in, and then find out that, that the darn pockets are upside down. <laughs> that would not be good. So here is the little book. And that's pretty much the book. Um, I do continue on, so if you want to continue watching to see what else I do to embellish this little book, you're more than welcome to watch the rest of it. Um, I do continue to add to this, but that's pretty much the book. So I erased all my pencil marks for my signatures. I find the center, and then I 
find the center of that because I want to put a closure on this book. And so I poke a hole in the center. I have this eyelet and unfortunately my um, eyelet setter there, I'm trying to make the hole bigger to get the eyelet in there, um, wouldn't reach. So I end up, I have a, um, and I realized that that wasn't going to reach, unfortunately, because that works so good. Um, I had to do it a different way, and I have this little hammer with a little eyelet setter that's a part of the hammer. But, you know, I struggle with this thing every time I have to use it. Um, my eyelet came out again out of the hole, so I'm just trying to get it back in there. But, uh, yeah, every time I try to use this little hammer, I just, I don't know how to do it. It just doesn't work. I mean, I got it. I kind of half-assed get it to work, but, you know, I don't, I don't get it. I don't know what I'm supposed to do. <laughs> I'm just, there's all these pieces and parts, and maybe, I mean, I, I need to, I guess, read the directions. I think I did once, and it still, I still couldn't get it. But, anyway, good enough. So, it's in there. So, I get this string that's um, elastic, and I figure out how much I need to put around it but again see how much bigger the cover is than the pages so I just lop that off the only thing I don't like about that is I like those ragged edges I wanted the edges to be ragged and that's why I didn't put the gesso all the way to the edge so I kind of end up cutting that off but on that one on the ends there but oh well it is what it is so I tie I get it my string I tie it in a knot and I poke it through the hole so that way I have a closure for this little journal. See, nice little closure. So I'm happy with that. And then I decide I want to, there's all these strings coming off of it, which is great because, uh, you know, I want it to be, you know, I don't want, I want it to be kind of, you, you know, worn and stuff. So I decide I wanted to add some ribbon and some lace and stuff to this. And then I also got a great idea that I wanted to um, add uh, a, a couple of strings of boho beads. I made, I have some boho beads that I made and I wanted, to, you know, I thought, well, it'd be great to add those as well. So you'll see that here in a minute. So I get out my ribbon and my string and I decide, okay, how long do I want these? That one's too short, so I can't use that one. That one pink one seems perfect, so then I use that to start measuring all the rest of them off of. So I lay it out, and I wanted different colors. So I've got reds, and I got black, and I got blues, and I got green. Well, I had a little bit of issue white. I had a little bit of issue with the green, which um, there is some um, either the dark blue or the black, and then I got a light blue here some measuring some of that out because I wanted some of that blue in there but I did want green so here's the green but then I didn't have enough piece a long enough piece left over so that's not gonna work yeah so I'm like well I need some more green because I need to make two of these since I have two signatures um, so then I look through my stash and I find some green lace and I thought well that'll work I'll put green lace in one and then the green um, ribbon in the other and so then I have this other colored lace so I've got some red here that I decide to use I got two links of that and some purple I got two links of that and <clears throat> start making two piles of the ribbons um, for the two different signatures so I have my two piles and then I gather up all the uh, pieces for the first one and I do put quite a bit in these, but I really like the way they turned out. And I find the middle, because I want the middle at the very bottom. And then I want, you know, it to be somewhat even. And I pull it up to the top. And I tr go to tie it and realize, okay, there's too much here to tie. I can't tie this together. I need another way to, to get these to stay together. So I went and got some wire, and that's where I got the idea. I saw my boho beads. I'm like, ooh, I need to add some of those. So I get some wire and clip off um, a piece of wire and gather it together and then wrap the wire around the whole thing. And then 
I continue wrapping one end of the wire around all of it and then get the chain and add that to the other end and finish wrapping that around so that way the chain that I'm going to hang my boho beads on is <clears throat> attached to the wire that I have holding all the ribbons together if that makes sense. So I have the chain and I'm like I got I had already picked out what three boho beads I want to put on here on this chain so this is going to be the bottom one so I figure out where do I need how long do I need that chain and I cut it. I take a jump ring and I open that up. I have some little jump rings here in this one thing of uh, charms. I open it up, I put the boho bead on there, and then I close it. So there's the first boho bead, and it's got, each one has like a charm at the end of them. I did these a while ago, so I got the second one. I do the same with that. I open the jump ring, put it on there, put it on the chain a little bit higher up on the chain. And then I get a jump ring, put it on the third boho bead and and the chain um, towards the top. So that way they there's three of them and they're like at different heights on the chain. And I close that. So I get that on there. So the, one done. So then I do the other one the same. So again, I gather up my ribbons. I first decided, well, I should cut off. The piece of wire I need to hold it together. So I get them all together. I try to get them to where they're all about the same. Find the middle. Wrap it around the second signature. And you know I want it fairly snug. Um, and then I start wrapping the wire around that. And <clears throat> adding the um, chain with the boho beads and stuff just like I did. Um, disclaimer, my um, by this point my um, recorder ended up shutting off on me because I guess I had you know filled it up and so you won't see this whole second process but it's exactly the same as the first. I wrapped the wire, I added the chain to the wire and then finished wrapping it and then I'm just using the clips there to make sure that it, their wire is good and tight and that there's no, nothing sticking out and poking, figure out how long I want this and then start hanging the boho beads on there with jump rings. And so here in a minute I'll show you a complete flip through the whole um, little journal and what it looks like. So here's where my um, camera shut off. So here is the completed journal with all the little ribbons and the boho beads are in there somewhere. <laughs> there's one and there's two and then I added this ribbon at the back because the clumps of ribbon I didn't want them to slide off so I kind of add a little bow kind of I wrapped around both of them and kind of tied it just to keep them together. So here's the book and you'll see the canvas, the printed papers, the the um, pages from book. This is the bag. Some music note pages. Some more printed pages. Um, book pages. Uh, coffee. Those are that's the tea bag that I put in the middle. And then I thought I should have probably put the tea bag somewhere else instead of in the middle because it is kind of a delicate thing that it might tear. But oh well, if it tears out. It's, I'm not going to stress out over it, but I thought they'd be cute in there to add like a little stamped image to or something. So here's some more printed pages, canvas, canvas, notebook, printed, book pages, <clears throat> coffee news, bags with pockets, canvas, yep, so on and so forth. So this is the little book I made. If you like this video, you can give me a thumbs up. You can also subscribe to my channel to see more um, or um, you can leave me a comment. I would love to hear from you. I mean, I really had fun creating this little book and this is going to be great to just do some little daily doodles and practice and yeah, have fun in. So um, I hope you guys like the video and this little journal and I hope you try this yourself. Talk to you later. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.